We're going to move on to a, another really, really exciting area. Uh, you know, we do hear a lot about uh, autonomous uh, vehicles, and it's all, almost all been um, uh, automobiles, but there's been this, uh, this, this company that's uh, one of a number, but the, sort of the one that's captured imagination uh, because it was, uh, well, you look through, I won't tell you the story. It's called Otto, uh, recently, uh, I think, acquired by Uber. Uh, really interesting story, really exciting potential. Um, so please, to, to hear about that, the co-founder of Otto, please welcome Anthony Lewandowski. Thank Anthony. You. Great to meet you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. And I'm here to talk a little bit about the exciting world of self-driving trucks and how the fuel and environmental and uh, human uh, life-saving potentials that there are with that. So let's talk a little bit about highways and how we spend the energy today. We look at 83% of the energy for moving stuff, whether it be people or goods or freight, um, by air, water, rail, or pipelines, uh, compared to the highway. It's stunning to see that the roads are actually the, the nervous, the uh, circulatory system of our, the, the planet's uh, uh, body, effectively. So if you look at it, um, you know, trucking is a, you know, generates a lot of pollution. You know, per truck, there's about eight times more CO2 emission than the car, which you would expect because they're much larger. Uh, but I see it as an opportunity to, to have a much bigger impact on reducing uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, and 76% of all the greenhouse gas emissions on the highway comes from trucks, which is a pretty stunning uh, number to look at. Uh, if you look at how it stacks up against other different modes of transportation, you can see, again, trucking is a huge aspect of where all the pollution is coming from. So, you know, how can technology come to uh, address this and make the world uh, a better place? Well, we could do that by looking at how do humans compare to each other? So the difference between the best, most, most fuel efficient uh, truck driver compared to the worst on the same route for the same amount of uh, weight that they're moving around is 35%. That's huge. Imagine one third difference on the fuel savings for something that's moving mass around. That must be uh, an amazing opportunity. So if you look at just training alone of these people, you can get five to 20% improvement. But now just imagine if you can bring technology and bring the, the technique and the precision of the best drivers uh, to every single car or truck out there. All of the fuel saving tricks and um, expertise uh, will be available to every single truck uh, all the time. We can also think about, you know, in the future there'll be platooning, trucks be driving very close to each other, but there's a way to do that now without having uh, full conversions of all the trucks. If you have a self-driving truck that can drive 24 hours a day, now going 65 or 61 miles an hour doesn't really make a difference, but you can get all the benefits of platooning by just driving four miles an hour slower. So uh, another thing that's really important is utilization. Uh, imagine that uh, the, the Federal Highway, or sorry, Department of Transportation has a statistics that 15 to 25% of all trucks are empty driving around, uh, which is pretty uh, impressive. I think it's actually much higher than that. Um, and the ones that are carrying cargo have 36% under utilization. Um, you know, this is the age of the internet. We can containerize things. We can batch things into smaller uh, uh, containers, and we can fill them in more efficiently. So bringing the utilization up would allow us to save uh, 100 million tons of CO2 and $30 billion of fuel every year, which is pretty substantial. Um, so what's it like to be a truck driver on a highway? Uh, what does it really mean? So, you know, 12% um, of all motor vehicle deaths are caused by truck drivers or trucking-related uh, incidents, and, but yet they only drive 6% of all the miles, and they make up for only 1% of the vehicles. So this kind of tells you about the opportunity for improving safety by making uh, truck drivers even more uh, safe than they are today. Um, and if we look at when does this risk actually happen, it turns out like, you know, humans are very good at driving when they're paying attention, but attention is very difficult to maintain for a long period of time. 
So if you look at over time, as you drive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to 13 hours in a row, and you look at the, the likelihood of the risk that you're going to get in a collision or safety critical uh, situation, goes up almost exponentially. And so this is why we have rules of uh, service on why we don't allow uh, truck drivers to drive more than 11 hours straight when it's uh, interstate commerce and uh, having a, a break after a certain amount of time. So if you look at this, um, this is the uh, kind of a zoomed in section of that on uh, a set that looks at near crashes. So when does technology, um, t so, so when does a truck driver uh, have their driving getting more and more dangerous over time? If you look at this, like after seven hours, there's this nice little drop, and that's because there's a, f a federally uh, required break. So if you didn't take that break, you could imagine keep extrapolating that in the future and seeing that it'd be about 30% chance. But it basically, it basically says that one in four drivers after driving their 11 hour shift uh, had a safety critical event, which is basically they, they did a lane departure, did a hard break. And so think about having the technology to drive a, a truck uh, as safe as the safest driver all the time, not just in their first hour of driving. And so with that, what we wanna do is we wanna stimulate the idea of having both uh, technology and uh, truck drivers work together to have a better uh, solution because the technology isn't ready today, it won't be ready tomorrow. Uh, hopefully it'll be ready soon, but we don't know exactly um, when uh, that will be. And so with that, I thank you very much and I uh, look forward to emails from you and um, have a great day, thank you.